Gun, obviously, is Krieg off K80, which I shoot for pretty much everything, except when I'm shooting at 20 bore, which is a K20. Chokes, almost exclusively now, 3 8 So light mod, 15 thou, whichever country you're in. Uh, that will take care of absolutely everything you're gonna shoot, any target, anywhere, with any shell. So make it really, really simple. You don't need to over choke. Impact resistance is the first thing. You know, you primarily you're wearing them for safety. So they need to be impact resistant for shot and pieces of clay. The color is very, very personal. It's gonna depend on your eyes, backgrounds you're shooting on and targets. Uh, to start off with, you don't need to go nuts on the number. I'd say get one or two, a light pair and a dark pair. And it depends on your budget. Um, there's lots of different stuff from 20 pounds a pop up to three, 400 pounds. Um, ask somebody like Ed Lyons. He's always a good shout, speak to them. Uh, we make some lovely Edwards eyewear stuff. Thank you very much. Plug, uh, comment, plug in, the, uh, in the comment section underneath. Uh, Pillar, again, fantastic product, but they're very much a different price point. So look at what you want to spend and work accordingly. But I would say, first off, safety first. Make sure they're, they're impact resistant. Really good question. Try and simplify everything, so break it down. It's always good if you can have a process to work through with, with every target you come to. So if you can come up to a bird, even if you don't like the look of it, if you can start thinking, right, I need to work through a certain set of parameters. So choose where you feel most comfortable killing the target, read the target, what it's doing at that point. Choose a hold point, which if you're not sure on the bird, come halfway back, because you're never going to be too far away from being right or being wrong. Make your shot and then make changes. The worst thing that people do is they go in, they panic, and they just start pulling the trigger randomly for six or eight shots and unsurprisingly they, they don't get anywhere. So no plan is always worse than a bad plan. Go in with something. It's inevitable. That's, that's something, I think it's gonna have some effects obviously for game shooting going forwards. Clay shooting, it's not gonna be an issue. I know we've not been forced into it for clay shooting yet. I think that's pretty obvious that it's going to come. Game shooting, for the vast majority of birds that people shoot, it will not be an issue. Steel is more than capable of almost everything we're going to be shooting at. The real high bird stuff, it needs to be addressed. Um, I think that's maybe going to be a combination of how the shoots run and also cartridge development and maybe changing some of the, um, the proofing requirements. So whether we can up the, up the velocities a little bit, maybe it'll be enough to, to get up and touch the big ones. Clay's first, just starting off. Recoil's almost certainly going to be a factor for you, so try and shoot as low a load as you can. 21 grams are absolutely ample for almost everything you're going to shoot. As you get more capable and comfortable mounting the gun consistently, you can start upping up to 24s and 28s. Game shooting, it's going to depend on where you're shooting, so if you're just starting off, you're unlikely to be going to any of the high bird shoots. A 30 gram 5 will do you for pretty much everything you're going to shoot. That's in lead. Um, everything you're going to shoot in the UK except for the really, really big stuff. So that's a, that's a good point. Don't, don't try and overdo it. More people go too heavy than too light. Pigeons, flighting pigeons or decoyed pigeons, I love it. I also love, I know it's unpopular, but crows, I love shooting crows just as much as anything else. Um, and high pheasants, yeah, high pheasants really do it for me. Not a massive fan of grouse, um, just for whatever reason, doesn't, uh, doesn't excite me too much. Uh, but to be honest, I'm, I'm happy when I'm out shooting. I'm, I'm never going to turn an opportunity down. Okay, who do I most enjoy shooting with on a day? All of my mates. It'd be a big team event. Um, you wouldn't be able to fit us all on a line, but I think the venue you're at is very much secondary. If you're shooting with a good team of guys, I would have all of my probably 15 or 20 closest mates out just on the same day, have a night out. Um, I think it'd be an absolute disaster, but it would be really good fun. It's all about the company. I think if you can get the company right, the shooting very much falls into place. We've had some fantastic days out on some pretty average shoots. We've also had some average days on amazing shoots where the company's not been so good. So get the people right and the rest will work. That's a really, really difficult question because there's loads of places that are absolutely phenomenal to shoot. If I had to pick one, I would probably say Linup. Linup, um, I've only shot there a few times. It's been spectacular. Uh, John Queen, the keeper there, runs an amazing, amazing day. Uh, the quality of the birds is fantastic. Hospitality is fantastic. Company's always been good. Um, and you can have a laugh. They, they make a really good day of it. But you know, there's, I could pull out 10 or 15 places where they're all, in my mind, just as, just as good as another. You know, that's, that's one that springs to mind, but I've had phenomenal days out all over the country. And sometimes it's not on, necessarily on the biggest shoots. You know, you can go and have a 70, 80 bird knock around with your mates and have an absolutely brilliant time. So it's not all about shooting big days, but yeah, the Linup's up there for me, certainly in my, it would always be in my top three. 
Well, there's a team of seven or eight highly skilled professionals. It's not as easy as you'd think. I mean, it starts waking up at three o'clock in the morning for the first wash. Um, they then sort of do the rough sculpt, wash again condition, cut number two, try and taper it down. Um, you know, but it's five or six hours a day well spent. This doesn't happen by accident. I have absolutely no idea and I hope I never have to find out. I don't think I've got a proper job in me now. I think after doing this for so long, I think uh, I've been ruined for the rest of my life. So fingers crossed I keep muddling through um, and enjoying myself. <laughs>